Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to take you through setting up Hypersync on Godox X Series products. If you want to know more about the pros and cons of Hypersync and when you should use it, check out this video in the top left corner or find it linked in the description below. And if you're looking for more videos on photography and lighting, go ahead and tickle that subscribe button. I want to thank Mark Lancaster and Mario Schultz. Only two weeks ago, I was struggling to get Hypersync working, but thanks to their responses in the Godox user group on Facebook, I was able to get this working and now I'm extending that guide to you guys. To use Hypersync on any Godox X-Series flash, you will need a transmitter such as the X-Pro, X-T2, or X-T1. If you're using a Godox flash, you likely already have this. But for Hypersync, you'll also need a Godox receiver such as an X1R or Flashpoint R2 single pin transceiver. I think the Flashpoint single pin transceiver is the best option because it's super cheap at $20 and also functions as a transmitter. Although if you're outside of the US, the other options are fine. The Godox X-Series products all have a receiver built in, but we can't use that here. The reason is the transmitter on camera needs to communicate a high speed sync signal to initiate a flash ahead of the shutter opening. But the flash has to ignore that high speed sync command so its flash pulse stays normal. First, connect the receiver to the sync port of your Godox strobe using an eighth inch sync cable. Then turn off the wireless function on your Godox strobe, or at least make sure it's on a different channel than your transmitter. Next, match the receiver to the same channel and group as your transmitter. At this point, when you fire your camera, your Godox flash should fire. Note, because you are connected via the sync port, you will not have remote power control of your flash. Next, use the controls on the flash to set it to full power or 1 over 1. Next, we need to set the delay function on the transmitter. This is in the custom functions of Godox triggers. On the R2 Pro Mark II, the option is clearly titled delay. Here you can modify the delay in milliseconds. Now the next part is kind of trial and error. You need to keep trying different delay settings to get your flash as well timed as possible. Note, this will vary based on the trigger, receiver, flash, and camera, so you can't just copy my settings and expect it to work, even if you have the exact same camera. Set your camera to its maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second or 1 8,000th of a second. Point your light and your camera at a wall so you can clearly see the flash. When you take a photo and you see a black bar, that is a flash being clipped. If the clipping occurs at the top of the frame, that means your flash is starting too late and the delay needs to be decreased. If the clipping occurs at the bottom of the frame, your flash is not delayed enough and it needs to be increased. Now, once you get rid of all that clipping, you'll probably notice that the wall isn't quite evenly lit. There will be a slight gradient, which is the visual result of the flash gaining or losing brightness. There will be a narrow range of delay values that result in no clipping. You can use that range to fine tune where the brightest area of the flash hits in the frame. Finally, while it's best to go through the syncing process at your camera's maximum shutter speed, you're not limited to that shutter speed when you're actually shooting. As you open up your shutter speed, the light gradient will smooth out more and the clipping range will expand. And that's all you have to do to set up Hypersync on a Godox X-Series strobe. This will work with any of their lights, 8200, 300, 400, 600, 1200, doesn't matter. All of them have a T.1 flash duration between 1 200th and 1 250th of a second at their full power. So Hypersync should be semi-usable at their full power on all the flashes. But a big note here is you really only want to do this at full power. As you decrease the power output, the T.1 flash duration gets shorter, meaning your window for getting no clipping and low light gradients is just going to decrease. So this really works best at full power. All right, leave a like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. And until next time, keep on shooting.